So, I've decided to repot my entire Venus flytrap collection for the springtime. How many divisions am I going to get? Well, let's find out. Okay, so big spring repotting video for all my Venus flytraps. We're starting off with the DCXL, and I got, what, like six or seven divisions off of this one. And the reason I'm doing this repotting is kind of to just split them all up into the individual pots. Also, a number of these Venus flytraps were planted in peat moss and perlite because I didn't have the sphagnum moss. And they also have a lot of this carpet moss growing on the top that started interfering with their growth. So you'll see that a little bit later on. And it's kind of like I always say, you can grow them in peat and perlite, but they really grow a lot better in the sphagnum moss. So here we have two trichterfall. They are in peat moss and perlite, and they all have that carpet moss on top. Uh, I'm not sure if that is actually carpet moss. I just call it carpet moss because... In my mind, it looks kind of like a big, thick carpet. It looks like they were having trouble growing through it and kind of was caking up on top. So I really just wanted to get all of that weedy carpet moss out of there. So I kind of did it as best I can. I'm going to have to be monitoring these plants to see if it starts growing back and kind of just pick it away before it takes hold of the entire surface. Uh, but as you can see, we had three tiny trichter falls and one tiny cup trap. Uh, they just don't really seem to do that well in this peat and perlite mix. So I'm going to repot them in a long fibered sphagnum. Here's another one, coquillage. We ended up getting two divisions off of that. The carpet moss wasn't really that bad on the top of this one, but... Uh, I don't know, it still was looking kind of funky, so I just repotted it anyways. And so what I'm doing is I'm repotting everything instead of the pure long fibered sphagnum moss, I am mixing the sphagnum moss with perlite. And there's a very specific reason for that. I'm going to be taking some extended trips, so it's going to be in the summertime, and when I'm on those trips, obviously I'm not going to be able to walk into my yard every morning and say, okay, how are the Venus flytraps looking? I'm going to be relying entirely on somebody else to take care of them. So, I know I've said I don't like sticking Venus flytraps in trays of water because they don't need it, and for the most part I don't, but in a specific situation, like in the middle of summer, when they're standing in full sun, and I'm not going to be there for two or three weeks, um, I'm not really going to take the risk. So, I plan on sticking all of these in about an inch of water for the three weeks in July, so hopefully they don't dry out and die, and they won't really rot in three weeks. And especially since it's the middle of the summertime, all that sunlight and heat is going to be evaporating the water much quicker anyways. So, not really a chance of rotting. Obviously, I don't really recommend the tray method for Venus flytraps. I don't think you need to keep them that wet, but, you know, for my situation, that's what I'm going to have to do. So... Long fibered sphagnum moss mixed with perlite should allow that to not start rotting because it'll you know break up the sphagnum a little bit, have more air penetration through the substrate, and you know we're just going to kind of see how it goes. But I'm pretty confident that that is a reasonable solution and that they will grow well in that. So as you see, I have that jug of azoxystrobin, which I'm watering everything with, just because I wanted to give everything kind of a boost for the summertime. So here we have a BCP, Kim Il-sung, 134302. I got two divisions off that. The roots aren't looking so hot, but, you know, it's okay, it'll survive. It's growing tiny new ones from the rhizome. Especially with that azoxystrobin treatment, uh, everything should be fine. And there's a long red fingers. Unfortunately, those BCP ones, I wasn't really paying attention to them. They were kind of just in my collection. I mean, I like them, but they're so tiny, they kind of get overlooked. And they seem to have a little bit trouble with the dormancy as well. And then when I saw one on eBay the other day, selling for $168, I realized, oh, maybe I should take better care of this plant. So, repotted it, hit it with that azoxystrobin treatment, and now it's in my garage under those LED lights. So here we had a big clump of SD Phoenix. We got 
seven divisions off of that, and we have this big, thick Lucia pot rhizome. I thought I was going to divide it into multiple plants, but it's kind of weird because it, it's really big, but it only has that one growth point, which was burying itself down. So what I did was I decided to just repot this, and instead of having that rhizome digging down, I kind of planted it at an angle, so now that new growth is closer to the surface, and hopefully everything kind of evens out with that plant, and it should, it should be fine. It's not going to die, it just has this weird growth habit, but I also have a second clone of it anyways. So it doesn't really matter. There's another DCXL. I got four divisions off of that, I think. They're in the front up there. Then all these tiny ones are kind of, you know, Cup Traps and Trichter Fall and those SD Phoenix ones. Here we have an Akai Ryu. I got two divisions from that. We have an Alien. I got two divisions off of that. And then as I started dividing everything separately, I realized, wait a minute, do I have enough room inside of this plastic storage container to fit everything and the answer was no uh, i was left with like what one two three pots still on the shelf in the garage one of those pots is a pot full of seedlings so i might eventually split those up into individual pots unfortunately they weren't really you know that unique most of them just look typical so i might just do like a group planting with that but anyways, uh, here we have the container almost full. So think I'm honestly going to have to build that greenhouse this year. It's not only like a dormancy thing where I can get, you know, just it's an easier situation than all these containers. Uh, with a greenhouse, I have natural sunlight. And now I have these lights for supplemental light. So I can do that. I can run a heater in there. It's nice and open. All the plants just kind of grow better in a greenhouse than, you know, these containers. Also, I will have more room. So that's the solution which I'm going to be building this summer. I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and build a cheap greenhouse. But for now, I have the Venus flytraps in the storage container. Got the LED lights over it giving them a little head start, sheltering them from any potential like rain and snow mixes we still may get over the next two weeks. But that's how they are right now. So I'm going to be transitioning all these Venus flytraps outside eventually. I'm going to be making a bunch more Venus flytrap videos. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down below to be notified when I come out with a new video.